He said the God RF is a pro? Pro and how? Like, is he good at, like, using his own deck and beating people? He's good at the game? Tell me more about this guy. Tell you more about this guy? Sure, the God RF, CRL North American champion, CRL Western champion, World Cyber Games champion, CWA Cup champion, top ladder player, and maybe, just maybe, the number one player of 2020. Hello and welcome. I'm Rich Slayton from Clash Royale League. This is Inside the Play, where we deep dive on some of the best moments in games in Clash Royale history. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video, ring the bell for notifications so you never miss a moment here. And of course, use code RICH in all parts and purchases for the Supercell shop. With no more ado, let's jump on into it. Today, we're talking about the first match of the season, the God RF one game away from a five game run and a King of the Hill sweep against Pain Gaming. And check this out, right out the gate, we know what they're running. It's about a 60-70%, 60 to 30, 60-40% match advantage overall to Lucas by the Royale API numbers. Of course, RF looks at this and he says that it's maybe a bit closer than those numbers actually say. He thinks it's 50-50. But either way, when you see Lucas open up by activating King Tower against the Hog Rider, immediately that number goes his way just a little bit. Now check this out. The God RF looks off screen and says something. That's him telling AC he thinks he knows what deck Lucas is running. He thinks he has the matchup nailed down. So we'll look at RF a little bit more as time goes on. Now this is the opening. He thinks he's got it nailed down and check this out. This balloon comes in, raged up, snowball from Lucas, and that's a big time connection Wait, what just happened here? The snowball was in the hand of RF. Well, check out what he thought was actually going to happen here, right? He EQs that Musketeer early. And when you Earthquake the Musketeer early on, it gives you the opportunity with the Bomb Tower to log right here. And when you get that log done correctly, the Musketeer does not get involved in the action. But let's look at what actually happened here. Right, you see he Earthquakes, gets the King Tower because it's already activated. But check out what Lucas does. He puts the... Lumberjack up high in front of the balloon, but also this heal spirit's going to come in as well. So all of that means the log is forced to come out from RF a little early. So rather than contacting the musketeer where it's supposed to be, as you see on the right hand side at the end of the bridge a little later, it contacts the musketeer just a little bit early, meaning that this musketeer, rather than die and not get a shot, check that out, she actually gets one shot off. So RF had that interaction down right, but didn't use the snowball because he thought that Musketeer shot wouldn't get off and the balloon wouldn't connect. Now on the other side of it, he doesn't overspend and he has enough elixir. He's ahead by one, plus he has the elixir on the board. So check out what he does. Yeah turn lemons into lemonade. Loads up on the left-hand side. Now he's got an extra five elixir on the board with that four responding to his musketeer and takes a huge chunk of damage back. So yes, he took that balloon shot, but check that out. He's pretty happy and he does say, how did that loon get a shot? Well, I already showed you guys back earlier in the video. Doesn't matter though. He saved the two elixir, went the opposite direction and took over the lead despite the slight miscalculation, which was an honest mistake. Now check this out. This is Lucas's next big mistake. Take a look at the hog positioning. Lucas drops his fisherman a half second early, essentially meaning that it pulls a little bit too early and lets that hog escape and get a shot. So Lucas now got the right positioning. The timing was almost there. A guy who's known for perfect micro makes a bit of a mistake. And I'm showing you that because it's important later on. And also because it's important to keep in mind that Lucas, who's an S tier player, one of the best 2.6 players in the world, known for great micro, he's nervous. It's his first First ever CRL match against one of the greats in CRL, and he's making maybe some mistakes, some slight errors that he wouldn't make normally. Check this out. So you see some beautiful defense here by RF. You saw that he used the snowball, and then check this out. Kaboom. This is the big prediction play. Yeah, that went by pretty quickly. Oh yeah, check out that little emote up in the top corner, by the way. Let's go back and look at this one more time. What happens? Look how early those goblins come out. The prediction. Two goblins out before the fisherman gets down, and the fisherman is play check this out two tiles too high 
played with the right timing this time, but played too high. Because again, what's happening? Lucas is nervous and knows the mistake he made last time. And because of that, because of the prediction and the placement, that Musketeer has to come out early. But oh yeah, it's time for a little alternate reality. What could he have done? Well, if he had played the Fisherman in the proper place with the same timing, the Fisherman pulls on its own and doesn't get distracted by the prediction goblins. By playing it too high, he makes the mistake. And of course, maybe that emote this time is making fun of the God RF instead of making fun of Lucas. Not on top of that, he also would have saved the four elixir and not had to spend that four elixir early. So Lucas here, just two slight mistakes. The early mistake with the fisherman being too early, and then the next time the fisherman being two tiles too high, and RF able to take advantage of both of those and take a big time win. So it was a nice prediction by RF. Lucas could have avoided it. Either way though, that's a different universe. That's different reality. What we have is this celebration right here. Check out RF giving a little high five over there to his teammate AC, and then looks to the camera, and oh yeah, comes out with the big Princess mm. Yawn emote. He wasn't trying to talk trash, guys. He just thought it would be something fun for the viewers, and of course, uh, we enjoyed it as well, and the RF, God RF put together a great performance. That's it for this episode of Inside the Play. A quick one, it was a quick game. We got done within three minutes, just a couple of key points inside that one to keep in mind, right? That timing and placement for the fisherman when countering the hog rider after your king tower is activated. Just the little pieces of micro where a half tile when you talk about the other side with the earthquake, uh, log, all the combination on the Musketeer, the little tiny things that make Clash Royale the great game that it is are why we have so much fun watching. Guys, again, thanks for watching the video. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe to this video, to this channel, like this one, leave a comment. What else do you want to see from CROS this season? And uh, don't forget to come back here next time for my channel, the best place to watch Clash Royale esports.